Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, hi, Marianne. Thank you for offering this opportunity to our Wayne State students. My name is Aya Samir. I am on the service chair for Club Med Virtual. I'll be leading today's session and reading any comments in the chat and facilitating the conversation as we go along. Uh, before we start, I want to remind everyone to maintain proper etiquette and please keep yourselves on mute unless Marianne asks you guys to unmute yourselves. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the chat and then we will address them along. Uh, Marianne will have a Q&A session at the end. So whether it's if you have questions regarding application cycle or the case study, just post them in the chat. Um, we will post a um, survey that will terminate 30 minutes after the session ends. Um, this session will also be posted on YouTube in case you are unable to attend or if you want to revisit any certain topics that Marianne discusses today. Um, but if you don't attend you can, or if you don't fill out your survey, you cannot receive your hours. Um, that's all I have to say. Marianne, you can get started. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Marianne Robin. I'm a second year student at Midwestern's um, Optometry School in Illinois. I'm just going to move this there. Okay. So you can all see my screen, right? Can you see it, Aya? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. Okay, so um, I'm a second year optometry student and I go to Midwestern in Chicago and let's get started. If I know how to use this, okay. Okay, so just a little bit of my background. So I graduated from Oakland University in 2018 um, with a bachelor's of science in biology. Um, I've worked in the optometric field for five years before going into optometry school and I'm gonna elaborate a little bit on that. Um, and I started optometry school at Midwestern um, in the fall of 2019, so last fall. Um, I know that a lot of people might not have the five years of experience before going to optometry school or going to like any graduate school, but I actually started um, when I was in high school, my senior year of high school, because I took a technical class at a technical school um, where I was able to learn like optics. So that was fun. Um, I learned how to like adjust glasses and fit people into glasses. And that basically helped me land a job. So after I got that job, um, it was like one of my goals to work there for all of my undergrad and I did. Um, and then after undergrad, I ended up taking a gap year. And that's when I started working at um, an MDOD office, so like an optometry and ophthalmology office. And that was really fun because that opened my eyes to like so much more than what I knew in just optometry. So that was good. And I worked there for a year full time um, before I actually got accepted into Midwestern. And I also took a gap year too to um, retake my OAT, which I know a lot of people usually like they like to do that where they take a gap year um, to do their tests, which it actually helped me a lot because I ended up doing a lot better um, the second time around because I did that gap year and I had more time to study for it. So now I want to talk a little bit about optometry school. So I love optometry school. I love optometry. I love eyes. Um, so the, these are just like a few pictures of like our first year, clearly, because no one's wearing a mask, right? It's not COVID times except for that, <laughs> that one picture. But um, yeah, so optometry school is really fun, even though it's really, really hard. Um, don't get discouraged though, like no matter what, like every grad school is gonna be hard no matter what you do. You might think, oh, this is like an easy way out to take to do like optometry or dental or pharmacy, but actually like there's really no easy way out for anything in medicine, honestly, like the classes are brutal. Um, we're on a quarter system, so a lot of schools not a lot of optometry schools are on a quarter system. There's only a handful, but then again, there's only like, I think 24 optometry schools now. So um, that kind of makes it harder because they do not accept like a lot of people either. So like our school accepts around like 60 students every year. Um, our class, I think it's the largest. We have like 66 or 67, um, but 
like this is just like some of our, the people in our class right here this is just like literally half of us at a christmas party that we had um and then like we have this was actually this top picture was in first year so like they actually like helped us like get started early on stuff because this is a slit lamp we haven't actually um learned it until this past quarter that we just finished that's me over here um practicing on one of my friends during after hours so that's what's really nice too about our school is that they let us practice after hours there's a lot of things to take into consideration when like looking for an optometry school and one of them is like the quarter system so like we're on a quarter system which means our our quarters are 10 weeks so our classes we only have classes for 10 weeks and then we have a one week break and then we start again so like next week we're starting again and I'm going to show you a schedule um on the next slide but that is like kind of stressful sometimes because there's just like so many classes we have like seven to ten classes a quarter um I think next quarter we have like nine not including labs or including labs I'm not sure but um it's a lot but it's doable because I did it and I was a very average student so it's doable if you have the passion for it you can do it like no doubt um and then here this is a funny picture because we were dissecting a cow, uh, eye, a cow eyeball so that was funny but yeah like it's just it's fun and you meet really like lifelong friends like this is my friend Vivian that I met um first year and she's like my best friend right now she lives in Florida which is fun because then I can go visit her in Florida since I'm from Michigan so it's fun you know like you get to meet people and and even though it's really really hard like we have fun too it's not just it's not just hard work <laughs> okay let me show you guys the schedule so this is like um this is like a schedule right every week we have different classes and different times our classes are scheduled at so like this is just one week so this is actually week four because it has a four in the corner here and I did the fall and the winter just so you guys have an idea of like how many classes we take um the winter quarter is usually like harder because we have the two weeks for our like winter break for Christmas and New Year's um so that's kind of hard because we literally have like three weeks of school and then after the three weeks, we have a two week break. And then when we come back, it's just like nonstop classes, exams, projects, like literally nonstop. So, um, and we also have, so like the red are exams. So we usually have two exams a week and that's like every week, two exams. In the fall, it was a little nicer because we had them on Tuesdays and Fridays. In the winter, we have them on Wednesdays and Fridays. So that doesn't give us like much time to study. If you wanted to really cram, you really can't cram um, for in grad school, which I you guys probably have heard of. But also what our school is doing too is we have in-person classes and in-person labs. So um, can you can you see my mouse, by the way, if I'm doing this? Yeah, we can. Okay, good. Okay, so um, here we have, so everyone is split up into two groups. We have group A and group B, and that way, like, if we want to go to class, we are able to go to class because it's, like, our designated time. So, like, this is all group B. So this week was group B. This week is also group B. Um, and then our lab groups, they actually split us up even further because what we had last quarter was just um, group A and group B. But then next quarter, because we actually did have some um, COVID cases, unfortunately, we had to make our groups even smaller. So now we have groups of 16 people instead of 30 and 30, which makes more sense, I think. And I think a lot of our classmates were asking for that too, just because we don't want to risk getting it. And a lot of people live at home too, because um, it's like our school's in a suburb of Illinois. So it's not like it's not like it's in the city of Chicago. Um, we're 45 minutes away from the city. So if we have, ever wanna go down there, we can, which we always do, it's fun. But um, a lot of people live with their family and a lot of people have high-risk parents or like high-risk siblings. So um, it's really nice that they did that for us where they split us up into smaller groups. But yeah, so next quarter we actually have three labs 
and I think like nine classes. Um, there's one class that's not pictured on here. And then we have in the fall, we only had, we also had three labs, but do you see how like our labs were on Wednesdays all day? And then now they split us up to Tuesday, Thursday, which is no big deal, but we basically have class from nine to five. Being in school is like a full-time job, but it's okay. Cause it's worth it. It's doable, but it's all worth it at the end. It'll be fine. Okay. So I think I want to stop here. Does anyone have any questions about like admissions or anything right now? Or do you want to just wait until the end of the um, presentation to do all the questions? Um, they can post their questions and then we can do it at the end. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions right now, yeah, just, just write them in the chat and then we'll um, look at them at the end. Okay. So now we're going to do a case study. Okay, so first I want to um, teach you guys some eye anatomy because it'd be kind of hard to do a case study without knowing what I'm talking about. So, okay, so I'm going to focus on just a few things. I know this is like a lot. Um, this is actually not even like close to what we actually learned in ocular anatomy, but um, it's just very simple. So here we have the cornea. So that is that is the first thing that actually reflects light into your eye. And that's, um, has a lot of like dioptric power in your eye too. So like, that's what helps you see basically that in the lens, but mostly the cornea. Um, and then you have the conj, the conjunctivus right here. And then you have the lens and the iris is right here. The iris is, um, that's what basically uh, holds the pupil in place. And you have the sclera, which is the white part of your eye. The conjunctiva is the one that covers the sclera, so it protects it. And then I'm not going to really be talking about the back of the eye, but you guys know, like, there's the retina on the back of the eye. Um, there's the optic nerve, which is where the nerve um, connects to the brain. And that's pretty much all I want to talk about for the this picture. Now, in this picture, um, my case study is going to be talking about the eyelids. So I want you guys to know there's two different kinds of conjunctiva on the eye. So you have the one that is on the eye, which is actually covering the sclera. That's the bulbar conjunctiva. And then you have like, if you flip your eyelids, you have the palpebral conjunctiva. And this basically, and then this um, middle part is the fornix. That's the inferior fornix. And then the superior eyelid is the same way. So you know how like people always assume that they can get their contacts like stuck in the back of their eye or something like that? That's actually not possible. You can't do that um, because this is how your eye actually looks from the side. So you have your eyelid and then you have the, the conjunctiva is right here, the bulbar conjunctiva, and then that transitions into the palpebral conjunctiva right there. And so if you get your contact stuck in your eye, it's going to get stuck somewhere in your conj. It's not going to get stuck, um, or in your eyelids, it's not going to get stuck in the back of your eye, which is good, which means we can take it out. Um, so that's basically what I wanted. Oh, and then we have the limbus. So the limbus, that is where the stem cells are located in your eye. And in your cornea, which I talked about before, you have five layers and the top layer is the epithelium and that layer can regenerate. So like, let's say you have like a corneal scar or like something that like an, an abrasion or something, um, the stem cells in the, in the limbus will help that cornea regenerate the epithelium. Okay, so I think that's all I wanna talk about for, for the anatomy of the eye. So let's get going to the case. Okay, so it's a sunny spring day and a seven-year-old boy named John comes into your office complaining about his eyes. His mother explains that he keeps itching his eyes and she noticed some discharge coming out of his eye as well. She said that his older brother had the same thing happen to him when he was around this age. Okay, so, so some takeaways from the case history is that it's springtime He's a young patient, there's a lot of itching, and there's discharge, and there's family history as well. So now we're thinking, 
what could this possibly be? So before examining the patient, you want to kind of think of like, okay, these are his symptoms. What do we think it could possibly be? Um, you know that he's itching, right? It's when you're itching your eyes and when there's discharge coming out of your eyes, usually like, what does that mean? If someone wants to like unmute themselves and tell me. Or if they want to write it in the chat, you can write it in the chat as well. Maybe like an infection or something. Okay. Someone said allergies or dehydration. Okay, good. Yeah, so you would probably think that this is like an allergy because you have um, a lot of itching and discharge. So what we need to think of now is there is really like basically four main allergies that this patient could have, four main ocular allergies that this patient could have. But one of them is for adults, so really there's only three. So um, then you gotta look like, okay, springtime and family history, those are really two important things because not every type of allergy has those two things, correct? So like, um, Sometimes you have allergies, you have seasonal allergies where which they're only in the spring, in the fall, in the summer, in the winter. So that could be one thing. Or um, since they have family history too, it could be something else. Usually with seasonal allergies, it's not really related to family history. But let's see. Okay, so then what we did, what you want to do next is you're going to do slit lamp exam. So a slit lamp is um, like that picture that I showed you guys before. I should have put a picture on the slide that I can go back really quick. So like this right here, this is a slit lamp. So you're gonna do a slit lamp exam. So you're gonna do a slit lamp exam and you're gonna find three things. There's three distinct findings when you do your slit lamp exam. There's giant papillary conjunctivitis, there's Horner transit dots, and there's a corneal shield ulcer. And you also want to note that everything is worse superiorly than inferiorly. So that helps you narrow down what this allergy, um, what this allergy is even more because those are specific to a certain um, allergy. So let me show you guys how this would look during a slit lamp exam. Okay, so. This first picture is the giant papillary conjunctivitis. So remember how I told you guys, um, there's two different conjunctivals on the eye. You have the bulbar conjunctiva and the palpebral conjunctiva. So this is actually the palpebral conjunctiva and it's just the, these little, are these like um, big circles that are on here. These are called giant papillary conjunctivitis. Um, and so there's that. <laughs> And this is an eyelid that's inverted. So we actually learned how to invert eyelids too. And that was not very fun, but we were able to do it. Um, these are Horner transit dots. So these are dots that are around the limbus of the iris. And then this is a corneal shield ulcer. So this is on the actual cornea. So what we do is you stain the eye. Um, this looks like it's stained with like sodium fluorescein. So you stain the eye and then you look, you use that slit lamp to look and see if there's any ulcers or anything around uh, on the eye, on the cornea. So with the slit lamp, you, there's different magnifications that you can um, change out so that you could see like certain structures of the eye. So like with the, like let's say the, um, like these, the, the, the palpebral conjunctivitis, or the giant, the GPC. These ones, you would use like a really low magnification because you want to see the whole um, eyelid, right? But then something like the corneal ulcer, you want to do like a higher magnification just so that you could actually see and make sure that this is what you're actually seeing, okay? So the diagnosis is going to be vernal keratoconjunctivitis or VKC. So we know that it's vernal because of these three um, findings. So if we didn't have these three findings, it would be 
probably just a, a seasonal allergy because, and also the family history is really important too, because what we have with vernal keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis is you have, it's usually in younger boys and it's um, usually when they have a family history of it. So like, since his brother had it before, he's probably gonna have it too. Um, it occurs, sometimes it's reoccurrent. So you just have to like keep, keep um, giving them like steroids and stuff. I'm gonna talk about it in the next slide. Yeah, okay, so, so the general pathogenesis of VKC is that it's an allergic reaction in the superior portion of the eye. Um, what causes the Horner transit dots is the collection of eosinophils around the limbus. So remember eosinophils, I don't know if you guys have taken like immunology or, or whatnot, but that is like a collection of like, um, like white blood cells that are just trying to help the limbus, but really it's not really helping. They're trying to like help heal the eye. Um, what causes a corneal shield ulcer is itching the eye. So like, remember we said he was really itching his eye and that causes the, the giant papillary conjunctivitis um, to rub against the cornea. So when it rubs against the cornea, it causes that shield ulcer. And then what causes that is it's just a non-specific allergic reaction. So if you have like any allergic reaction, you can get these, um, these pet pillar uh, con conjunctivitis. So you can actually even get these from wearing your contact lenses and not cleaning them too long for a long time. So it's also like, it's, it's kind of like a hygiene and an allergic um, thing. And so to treat it, you're, the, very, the main thing you wanna do when you wanna treat any allergy is to avoid the allergen. So like he was outside playing outside in the springtime so that means that we want to tell them like, okay, you're probably allergic to like pollen or something. Maybe he had an allergic reaction to a certain plant that he was playing around or something. So that is something that we need to keep in mind. And we need to tell the, pa the parent that like, you know, maybe before he goes outside, you want to give him like a mast cell stabilizer. So that is like, uh, or antihistamine mast cell stabilizer. The mast cell stabilizers are like, um, these are drugs that you can give before the allergic reaction actually happens. So like, you know that this is the springtime, you know he wants to play outside um, or you know it's about to turn springtime, you wanna give it to them like a week or so before they actually go into it and like actually deal with the allergen. Um, you can put a bandage contact lens. So a bandage contact lens is basically a contact lens that you put on the eye just so that the cornea doesn't get scratched. And sometimes you can even put like medication in it so that it keeps the eye lubricated um, while protecting the eye, which is really cool. Um, you wanna give steroids for the inflammation. You wanna do cold compresses for the inflammation, but also the main thing is to avoid the allergen. And okay, so since I'm not actually a doctor yet, and we just, this was a case that I got from my disease course, I wanted to tell you guys how I memorized this disease for my exams that I have for this class because we learned a lot of diseases <laughs> and we had to come up with like certain ways to memorize them all because you you get to a point where everything sounds the same, everything looks the same and you're like, well, how am I supposed to memorize this? So how I memorized this is that I thought of it like Vernal is a seven-year-old boy who came into your office after playing outside in the springtime. He was playing with the shield that had dots on it. And then V, like the letter V and Vernal is open at the top. So everything happens superiorly because there's how I told you guys, there's four different um, kinds of allergic keratoconjunctivitis care that a person could have and um, oops, let me go back. And so that was why um, we had to memorize it this way because vernal is always superiorly. Everything happens superior and it's always with the with young boys. And our professor said um, that mostly since seven year old boys. So that was something that we had to like really memorize um, because the other three, so like there's 
there's, I think it's called atopic keratal conjunctivitis. That one starts with an A and the A is open on the bottom. So everything happens inferiorly, but that one also happens in adults. It doesn't happen in children. So there were like certain things that like we make stories for so that we memorize them because otherwise it'd be very hard. Um, but another thing is too, with the atopic one, you also get the Horner transit dots, I'm pretty sure, but you don't get the corneal shield ulcer. So that's why we say he was playing with the shield that had dots on it so that we remember that the shield ulcer is for vernal, it's not for the atopic. And then the other two allergies are just the seasonal one and then the year round one, um, which those two are more broad and more like, you know, if a patient comes in like during the, the springtime and they say, oh, this happens to me every year, then you're like, okay, that's a seasonal allergy. Or like if they come in and they say, oh, this is like, this is what happens to me like the whole year, like I can't get rid of it. Then you say, okay, that's like a yearly allergy. So you really want to like, um, find like treatments for it based on like what the actual thing is but like this helps us really narrow it down so I think that's all that I have yeah these are the references so these are all that I have for you guys um so we can do question and answer right now um um you guys can type any questions you have in the chat and I can read them um, Mimi, do you want to get started? Maybe talk about how like you were pre-med and then decided to switch over to optometry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So here, let me, okay. So I, okay. So how I got into optometry was that when I was like younger, I always wanted to do it. Um, when I first got my glasses, when I was in literally fourth grade, I remember like leaving the eye doctor and I looked at my dad and I was like, I'm going to become an eye doctor. And he just laughed at me and he was like, okay, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be an eye doctor. Um, and then when I was in high school, I was like, wait, I can do ophthalmology um, and go to medical school and be an eye surgeon and then help even more people. Cause my whole thing was like, I just want to help people see better. So, um, when I went to college, I initially was pre-med. And then after my first year, I realized like, you know what, if I go to medical school and I don't end up in an ophthalmology residency and I ended up just doing like internal medicine or something, I was like, I would literally hate my life so much. So I was like, you know what, I can go to optometry school because I just love eyes. Like I've always been fascinated with eyes and like the eyeball and how it's connected to the brain and how like, just like even the sense of vision, you know? So um, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to optometry school. Like I'm, I'm going to do optometry because I know that eyes are what I actually want to focus on in my career. Like I know that I want to um, like how people see. And that's like the most important thing to me right now. I was like, I just want to help people see and like see better than what they could see. Because when I was younger, my prescription was kind of high. It wasn't like too high, but I went a whole year, like all of third grade. And I still remember this, all of third grade, I would sit there and cry in class because I couldn't see the board. And my teacher would just tell me to go sit in the front. And then I'd cry even more because I didn't want to sit in the front of the class. So, and mind you, I come from... <laughs> from a household where my both my parents don't wear glasses and they still don't wear glasses and they refuse to wear glasses so when I told them that I need glasses they were like no you don't you don't need glasses like you're fine and I'm like I can't see like I literally thought that when I would grow up I would be able to see like I would watch my parents drive and say how are they driving I can't even see that sign on the street like hopefully like when I grow up I'll be able to see because I can't see anything right now so that was kind of like really eye-opening to me when I actually went and got glasses. And I'm like, wow, like I can actually see leaves on trees. Like I couldn't see any of that. It was really bad. Um, and so then my sophomore year of college, sorry, I was like backtracked really bad. But anyways, um, my sophomore year of college, I was like, you know what? Let me look up optometry schools in the United States because coming from like living in Michigan, all you really hear about is Ferris. 
like um, Michigan Chicago or Michigan College of Optometry at Ferris, right? And I literally thought that Ferris was the only optometry school there was because I never did my research because I always thought like, oh, if I do optometry, I have to go to Ferris. Like I have to go to Ferris. It's the only school, but that's the only school in Michigan. It's not the only school in the whole United States, which I don't know why I thought that. I have no idea why I thought that it was. But anyways, so I did my research and I found um, Midwestern. And Midwestern is actually a newer school. So I'm actually in their third graduating class. So their first graduating class is graduating this year, which is really exciting. Um, I'm going to be in their third graduating class. So that's going to be fun. But because it's a newer school, there is a lot of like restructuring that they're doing. But um, since we're like the third class, they pretty much have our schedules like set basically because of they looked at what the first and second um, year classes have been doing and like what they liked and what they disliked and what they felt they needed more of and what they felt they didn't need more of. So that's really like cool. Um, and so I was really looking at like Midwestern and ICO because I really... I see it was Illinois College of Optometry. I really want to be in Chicago because I was like, it's only four hours away. And um, like Ferris is only three hours away. I'm like, what's another hour from home? It's okay. Like, it's not that bad. Plus I have like family that lives in Chicago. So it's like, if anything happens, like I'm good. I have family. Um, I can stay with family. It'll be fine. Which actually was really smart because when COVID happened, I actually had to stay with my aunt. So that was that was good that that happened. But um, now that COVID happened, that I stayed with my aunt and I was able to stay with family. But um, yes. So after I did that research and realized that like I actually wanted to go to optometry school, I literally dropped medical school out of my mind. And like, it was almost like a stress relief too, because I just felt like I was so stressed, like thinking about medical school and thinking like, oh my God, I have to go to medical school and like, I have to be an ophthalmologist. And then I was like, no, I literally don't because I can go to medical school and not be an ophthalmologist, but I know I want to do eyes. So I know I have to do something in the optometric field. So ultimately I picked up optometry and I've never been happier. And I honestly, like, I can't even imagine what I would do in med school right now because how Midwestern works is that it's just a graduate school. So it has a uh, DO school, so a medical school. It has a dental school. It has a farm, pharmacy school. It has an optometry school. And then it has master's programs too. And I think it has, I think it has a PA school too. Yeah, a PA and a speech pathology. So like it's just a graduate school. And I see like how the other, um, oh, and they have physical therapy too. And I think occupational therapy. So I see how like all the other um, students are like struggling and like studying in the library and like we all are on the same struggle. Like when I tell you guys, like you can't really take the easy way out in medicine, like at all, you literally cannot take the easy way out in any, in anything that you wanna do in the healthcare field, like anything. And I really can't stress that enough because I always feel like, like I thought I was taking the easy way out when I was like, okay, I'm gonna do optometry, but now, ugh, like, I feel like I'm taking the easy way out because I'm not going to medical school. I'm not going to do the residencies, but I can still do a residency if I want to. So with optometry school, like, you can do a residency and specialize in something um, after you graduate. But the difference is that our residencies are, like, usually, I think, like, six months to two years long. So it's not even that long. Um, and what you also can do is like you don't even have to do a residency you only do residency if you want to learn more about something that you want to specialize in so like when you're doing our rotations in fourth year I just realized I didn't even tell you guys like how um the years go but I'll, I'll explain it right now but um so like for fourth year you do your rotations you literally have rotations the whole year and at our school we do four different ones because we run a quarter system. So we do one every three months. Um, and so you start in the summer and then you end in the summer. So you, we graduate, you graduate at the end of May, you end in the spring technically. But um, so during your rotations, 
like you can pick like if you want to do I think our school makes us do all different kinds of rotations so we have like a disease one we have a contact lens one we have a primary care and I think we can choose what we want to do with the last one but like all of our rotation sites have different specialties so like if you go and like you really really like one specialty like you can just stick with that specialty and then um like go from there, like literally just say, oh, you know, I really liked contacts, but I don't want to do residency in it because I don't want to learn more. I feel like I already know enough about it. So you can be a contact lens specialist. But if you do a residency, that's even better because you actually are a contact lens specialist and you don't have to just say you are one because like you actually have like more knowledge about it and you actually have to like keep up with like the CE and all of that, um, the stuff for your like basically second degree so you don't have just an OD you have um like a fellowship degree also so there's that um oh let me tell you guys about like how our years are structured so like first year you start in the fall and you end in the spring so you have the summer off your first year um I'm pretty sure all optometry schools are like that I don't think there's like a real like difference um but we're on a quarter system. So we have three quarters. And then in those three quarters, we take about, like I said, seven to nine classes every quarter. Um, I don't remember if that's with labs or without labs, but I'm thinking that's, I think that's without labs. Cause I remember, I, yeah, that's without labs. So like with labs, it's probably around like nine to 11 classes a quarter. Um, but our credit hours are like not that much. So like, it doesn't seem like it's a lot. I think we have like, it's around like 20 credits a quarter or something. But anyways, um, you do that first year. First year is mostly science. It's like science and some optometry. Um, we have clinical lab. We start in the clinic, literally our first week of classes. We learn stuff that we do in the clinic. Like right now, where I'm at at this point, I basically know how to do the whole eye exam, except for like, um, BIO, which is like a, which is like a thing that you look in the back of the eye with. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever had this done when you go to the eye doctor, but it's like that helmet thing that they wear with the light over here. And then they use another lens and then they just look in the back of your eye. We haven't learned that yet, but basically we know how to do a prescription. So like, I know how to do a refraction. Um, I know how to do like using the slit lamp to check like the general health of the front of your eye. We haven't done the back yet. Um, and what else? Oh, we don't, we're starting contact lenses this next week. So that's going to be fun because I like contact lenses. And um, yeah, so that's like second year, basically like with all the stuff that I just talked about. First year was mostly just like the pre-testing stuff and the refraction. So like the prescription and like the different ways to do them because there's different ways to do it if like someone has like a disability or if there's like a baby like for infants there's different ways to find a prescription for them um and that's basically what we learned in first year we learn a lot about like um like eye turns like strabismus and stuff like that because that's really really important important and some people don't even know that they have an eye turn because it doesn't happen all the time it could happen like every now and then and so like it's our um like it's our duty to like find that and tell them and treat it so that's fun we're going to learn more about that next year so first year we basically just learned like the pre-testing stuff and science second year we're learning more of like contact lenses and like going more deeper into the eye exam but second year we're also taking classes like pharmacology um and disease and contacts so like we're going deeper into it third year we start in the clinic so third year we have class like clinic you can have clinic from like 8 a.m to 8 p.m like there's some people that have really long days in the clinic, um, but like, I don't think they, actually, that's a lie. I don't think that they would make someone go from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., but like, that's like the clinic schedule. So like people can go, they have like different shifts. So like you can go from eight to 12, 12 to four or four to eight. So there's that, um, but then you also have to start studying for boards because we take our boards in third year. So we have, three different um, boards. We have part one, part two, and part three. Part one is 
basically what you learn, everything that you learn in first and second year, because it's like the science, it's the optometry classes, it's literally everything. Um, part two is more of like just optometry. It's all case, sorry, case studies, I'm pretty sure. And part three is um, the actual eye exam. So like you have to go to North Carolina and when you go to North Carolina, there's like an actual patient there and um, are there, I don't know if it's a real patient. I think it's an actor probably where um, you do the eye exam on them. And I think, I don't know how much time you get for that one, but what our school does is we have our proficiency room. So every like few weeks we get tested on proficiency to see how well we actually perform the clinical skill that we learned in clinic. Um, so our actual proficiency room mimics like the, the actual testing center place that, that you would go to take your part three of boards. So that's really cool too, because we practice in those rooms like all the time. So like we know and we know what to expect um, when we actually go in to do part three of boards. So that's really cool. Um, so you're gonna do that all third year and fourth year. Fourth year is all rotations. Third year, you still have classes while you're in clinic, but I'm, I don't think you have, like my friends that are in third year right now, they basically have more clinic than they have class. So they don't have like as many finals, like our finals week last week was like, we had an exam every day and it started on Friday, like last Friday and it ended on, no, the Friday before last Friday and then it ended on this past Friday. But we literally had an exam every single day. And next quarter we have, I think two exams on one day and then we have an exam every single day after that. So it's like really, really, like second year is really um, where you learn the majority of like optometry basically, um, which is why they always say it's like the hardest year. But I, don't, I wouldn't say it's the hardest year. I just feel like it's the year that you learn the most material. So that's why people say it's the hardest year. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Third year should be a little more chill, but third year you have to study for boards, which is really hard. So that's going to be fun. And then fourth year, you just have rotations and then you graduate and you can either do residency or you don't have to do residency. So I think that's all I have. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Yeah, there are a few questions in the chat. Um, okay. Someone asked, how many schools did you apply to and why did you choose Chicago and how was moving away from home? Okay, so I applied to, so I actually applied twice. So the first time I applied, I applied to five schools. I applied to um, Ferris, which is Michigan's optometry school. I applied to Indiana. I applied to Ohio State, to Midwestern and to ICO. And I honestly did not do as well as I thought I was gonna do on the OAT. So I literally got rejected from all of them, except for Midwestern. Midwestern, I got, um, I got an interview at Midwestern and then I got waitlisted. And this is something that like, not a lot of people know, but when you get waitlisted or after you get an interview, what you have to do is any like new information that you get, like if you get uh, like a new transcript, like you have to update your grades or something, you don't update them to OptumCast, which is the um, application site. You have to literally send it to the school. But I didn't know that. So I ended up just sending it to the um, application site instead of sending it to the school after my interview. So they never saw it and they were never updated on my um, on my grades too. And so I ultimately didn't get in the first time. But the second time I applied, I was like, you know what? I really wanna to go to Midwestern because I, I mean, I had an interview at the school. I knew what the school was about. I knew it was a newer school but I just felt like, it just felt like home to me. Like when I went there, the first time I went there and I was looking around and I was looking at the people and I was like, these just look like my people. Like it, it reminded me of um, Oakland University's campus. And the reason why I loved Oakland University's campus is just because of the way that it just made me feel like I was at home. Like, I know this is my school. Like, this is, this is gonna be fine. Like, I'm gonna be fine here. So when I went to Midwestern and it reminded me of that, right away I was like, oh my gosh, I actually really love this. Like, I wanna be here. 
And another thing um, was that at Midwestern, you basically like, you can live on campus, but they have dorms. So they have dorms and they have apartment style dorms, but there's not a lot of apartment style dorms available. And usually they give them, I'm pretty sure they give them to people that have already lived in the dorms. So I, but I really actually wanted to live by myself. Like I wanted to experience that, like living, going away from home because I lived at home in undergrad. So like I was used to that already. I knew how that was gonna be. And I knew how distracted I would get too because I would get really distracted at home. Um, and so I was like, you know what? Like I really just wanna experience living by myself, which I didn't live by myself. I ended up living with like two roommates that were in the dental program, but, um, and that was fine, but we just had our differences. And so like now I live with someone that's um, in optometry. So that's really fun. And like, you know, we get to study together and stuff. So that's really fun. But um, like moving away from home, like it didn't bother me as much because one, my sister was already in Chicago because she goes to Loyola. And I was like, okay, she's there. My aunt was there. So like, it wasn't that bad, but also I'm like very, I'm a very independent person. So like, it didn't bother me at all. Like I think I got homesick maybe like once and I would that like shocked me that I even was homesick because I was like I think going home in like a week or two anyways so I was like why am I feeling like this you know but like sometimes it gets to you like sometimes you're like oh I'm doing like all of this and like I don't even get to see like my parents or like my dog like my dog is what I usually get homesick about I don't even get homesick about my parents because I can like call them all the time it doesn't bother me but like my dog I can't talk to my dog you know but um, so like, it wasn't that bad. Like the move wasn't bad. And like the school, like literally, let me, let me go back to, let me go back to the pictures so you could look at something while I'm talking. So like, um, like our class is so close actually, because we are all basically on the same boat. We're all struggling together. Like, it's just really fun because like, like when we pass like when I tell you guys our last final on Friday whenever like someone would pass because we got our scores right away after that for some reason like people were coming down the hallway like screaming like like yes I passed I passed and we were all like cheering them on like it's just like a very like you feel like you're a little family and the thing is like with COVID it just sucks so much because we barely get to see each other all the time now but like when we do see each other it's so fun so like, I don't know, it just like, I just knew it just from the, the like, the very first time that I went to the school, like for my first interview. And then, um, so the second time around, when I applied, because I didn't talk about that yet. Um, I only applied to Midwestern, because I was like, this is the school that I know I'm, I see myself at, like, I know I'm going to be here. Um, and, you know, like I already had an interview the first time, the second time I got waitlisted and I got rejected was because of things that I knew I could fix. So I fixed them. And then after my interview, I got accepted the next day and I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm supposed to be here and I know I'm going to be happy here. So yeah, that was fun. Do you have another question, Ayo? Yeah, um, Nicole asked, are there any courses that you took in undergrad that you feel helped you the most in optometry school? Is there a class you wish you took in undergrad that you think would help you now? Okay, so um, there are, so like our science classes that we take in optometry school, you can take them in undergrad. So like we have um, physiology. So we take human physiology, we take anatomy, gross anatomy and ocular anatomy, but you know, you guys have gross anatomy that you could take. Um, we have immunology, immunology. I took an undergrad and that helped me a lot actually because immunology in grad school is very, very fast paced. And like, if you don't have like room for it in your schedule or like you can't take it or your school doesn't offer immunology, that's totally fine, it's doable. But like, it just helped me because I already had that background and like a knowledge about it. Um, what else did I take? Oh, I took a science of vision class in my undergrad. They offered it every other year at Oakland University. I don't know if other schools offer any like um, classes about vision or about eyes, but that helped me a lot too because 
there were like small, like very small things that we learned that I actually remembered. And that actually like helped me when we took like our neuroanatomy, um, our neuro, yeah, neuroanatomy physiology, because we did that in during um, COVID and like from March to May. So that helped too. So if you have like a neuro class that you can take, like neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, um, I think that's it. What else do we take? Anatomy, immunology. Oh, we took microbiology. So micro also take micro and biochem. We had a biochem class. So immunology, microbiology, and biochem. Those are like the three classes that I would like recommend that you take because like our school makes you retake them basically like you have to take them again because they test you on them on boards so every class that we take like the science classes and the optometry classes are tested on boards so that's why we have to take them which I was so mad because I'm like why do we have to like take these classes again but it, it's actually helpful um some schools don't make you take those classes though like some schools you literally just start in optometry classes and you don't look at science classes which can be helpful if you already like have done really, really well in them and you can remember them for another like two or three years before you take boards, before you start studying for boards. But like, um, I think it's nice that our school offers it so we can like just do it, take it and study it. Do you have any um, other questions? There aren't any other questions. So I think we should wrap it up. Um, okay. Thank you so much for this session, Marianne. I enjoyed how interactive and encouraging you were, and I can't wait for your session with Rima in December. Um, if you want to post your social media or your email address in the chat, please free, feel free to do so. Okay. To our Wayne State students, please make sure you complete the Google survey that's posted in the chat, uh, summarize the session so you can obtain your shadowing hours. Thank you all for joining and I hope you have a great night and great Thanksgiving weekend as well. Enjoy your break. Yes, happy Thanksgiving everyone. I'm gonna post myself in the chat real quick too. <laughs>